If the Democrats get in, they're going to raise your taxes. You're going to have crime all over the place. You're going to have people pouring across the border. So why would that be a blue wave? I think it could be a red wave. I tell you what, really, I think it should be a red wave. There's the prediction. President Trump last night in Ohio campaigning a special election for the House of Representatives that takes place on Tuesday. Ahead of the midterms, the president says he will be on the trail almost every day. Here to discuss talk radio panel Chris Stigall on the left, Kyle Kalinske on the right. You will soon learn that that is not where their political positions are, but that is where they are on the television screen. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Chris, to you. Uh, the president seems to feel as though he's got a winning strategy here in saying that Democrats are too far to the left to be part of the mainstream for traditional crossover voters. Winning strategy? I don't think he has to say it. I think we just have to listen to them. I mean, this chaos that you've been reporting on this weekend that went on in Portland with the ICE facility there, with candidates in New York calling ICE agents Nazis and calling for the shutdown of, of, of ICE, uh, uh, the Sarah Jong woman who's now an editorial board member of the New York Times calling out, you know, whites and white men particularly and making some really despicable comments. I mean, they're, they're truly unhinged in a way we've never seen. I don't think Trump has to do much heavy lifting, frankly. Let them do hmm. all the talking. Uh, Kyle, should moderate Democrats worry about this far left push? Uh, no, I think that the far left is actually the way for Democrats to win, believe yeah. it or not. So when you look at the polls and you look at all the substantive policy issues, the American people overwhelmingly support Medicare for all, for example. They overwhelmingly support free college. They overwhelmingly want to end the wars. So when you go issue for issue, the American people are actually with the far left. And in fact, President Trump, when he ran in 2016, stole some of those issues. He ran against the wars. He ran oh. against the trade deals. Uh, and, so well, if had, anything, and, and Kyle, you might, you, you might have a point. He, he also said he wasn't going to touch any of the entitlements, Social Security or, right. or, or Medicare. You make a good point in terms of where the Democratic Party is headed. Uh, there's a lot of Democratic Socialists beginning uh, in New York that have started to knock folks off, uh, longtime Democrats. Uh, Tuesday's primary in Missouri, Cori Bush, Democratic Socialist, taking on Lacey Clay, longtime Democratic uh, congressman. There comes a question, though, in terms of how palatable across the board these folks are, not just in primaries. Interview with Cori Bush from about two weeks ago, and then we'll get your guys' reaction. Roll it. The wealthy should pay their fair share. Yes, wealthy okay, should pay their fair share. What is a fair share? What percentage? So you're saying that 40, you're, you're saying that they're paying their fair share is what you're saying. No, I'm asking what percentage is a fair share? Their fair share, the same, if I'm paying, if a third of my money is going to taxes, then I think a third of their money should be going it to does. taxes. It does. Well, it does. I'm trying to understand the, because you realize the ta effective tax rate on the poor is less than it is on the rich, right? Okay, so first of all, um, I'm not the poor. I'm very close to that line, but I'm not the poor. Okay, so the effective, tax rate on the, the effective tax rate on the middle class okay. is less than it is on the rich, correct? What fair share would you like to change the tax rate to on the wealthiest what percentage of Americans so it's a fair share? So let's say the wealthy 1% could pay Let's say if they pay, let's just give them 45%. Uh, Kyle, uh, is that the future of the Democratic Party? I hope it's the future of the Democratic okay. Party. Jeff, Jeff Bezos has over $100 billion at the same time that we have 60,000 homeless veterans in this country and 400,000 homeless Americans. And the American people, again, to go to the polls, overwhelmingly want to raise taxes on the rich, overwhelmingly want to raise taxes on Wall Street and corporations. I'm talking about 58% of Americans. So if your strategy is to defend the rich, by all means, go right ahead. Chris, and I'm guessing you just really hope that Cori Bush is the future of the Democratic Party. Oh, these mathematicians are brilliant. This, this Alicia Acaso cortez before her, they, these are wonderful spokespeople. Let, as I said in the open, let them keep talking. By the way, it's not like we're talking math and economics with them most of the time, although when they do, that's pretty golden. We're still talking about radical French stuff, abolishing ICE, abolishing law enforcement. You know, abolishing law enforcement? Why are you making things up? That's made up. You just made that up. Who says abolish Did law I? enforcement? 
Yes, you just well, you just made that up. Is ICE Who said not, abolish is law ICE enforcement? Not, Nobody. You did. Is I, excuse me. Is ICE not law enforcement? Uh, Customs and Border Protection mm -hmm. already protects the border. ICE was created in 2003, and by the way, there are allegations of them literally not doing Kyle, slavery. Kyle, that Kyle, that Kyle, 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 Ending ICE or abolishing ICE does not play well in polls in the heartland. That is not a popular uh, thing in Michigan, in Ohio, and in Missouri. That's correct, but that's because we need to make the argument. And for example, like I just referenced before hmm. I was being talked over, there are allegations of literal slavery <laughs> happening at private prisons run by ICE. You're laughing. Literal it was in the slavery. Washington Post. It's been proven. Oh, for God's it, sake. it was proven you know, in a court of law. Yeah, okay. A court Corey, of law proved that there's merit. Our, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying Senator. to figure. I'm still trying to figure out how we got from uh, there to here. Uh, we will dissect that in the post mortem. Meantime, fellas, we got to run. It was great having you both on here. Wow. Uh, great Look it up. I'm correct. Great Factually conversation. Correct. All right, Chris, Kyle. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it, fellas. <laughs>